just a little while longer. Hold on, just a little while longer. Hold on, just a little while longer. Yeah. Everything is going to be all right. Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on. You got to pray on just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. Hey, everything is gonna be be all right. Payday is coming after a while, and it won't be very long. You're going to look for me, and I'll be gone. I'll be somewhere around God's throne. That's where your loved ones is at, even though they have died from the coronavirus. But I just want to tell you, ooh, hold on. Just a little while longer. Don't you give up. Hold on. You got to hold on just a little while longer. Please hold on, children. Just a little while longer. And everything is going to be be alright. got to hold on. I, I know you're frustrated. I, I know you're depressed. I know perhaps you're stressed out, but I come to tell you that if you just hold on through the night, I want to let you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I, I, I don't want you to surrender. I, I, I don't want you uh, to take your life. I come to let you know that while you're listening to me on Resurrection Sunday, on this Easter Sunday morning, that the Lord promised that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. There's a word I want to share with you and how many know that we need a word from the Lord. We heard a word from the White House, but we need to hear from God who sits on the throne. And there's a word that I want to share with you. I hope that you are listening and watching on Facebook this morning. This is a word that will inspire you, that will encourage you, that will uplift you in these trying times that we are experiencing. In the New Testament collection of writings, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, commencing with the 12th verse and the few of the following verses, uh, these words are mirrored, cataloged in your hearing. It reads thus, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also Vain, yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ 
be not raised. Your faith is vain. Yet are while ye are yet in your sins. Listen to what Paul said. Then they also which are fallen asleep. In other words, those that have died and passed on, who deceased in Christ, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Verse 20 reads thus, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Lastly and finally, verse 22 reads thus, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We want to place our sermonic spotlight on verse 20. And we want to take text and talk about on this Easter Sunday morning. It's not a hoax, but the hard facts. It's not a hoax, but the hard facts. Our president uh, recently, not too long ago, uh, said that the coronavirus was a hoax. Uh, he blamed it on the Democratic Party. But then, brothers and sisters, he found out lately uh, that the coronavirus is not a hoax. Let me pause to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the coronavirus is, listen now, the hard facts. You have seen, brothers and sisters, in the newspaper. You, you've watched it uh, on the news. You've heard it on the radio. And friends and loved ones have died around you, suggesting that it is not a hoax. Matter of fact, uh, some of the symptoms, brothers and sisters, is shortness of breath or coughing or sneezing and fever. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the coronavirus is not a hoax. And you need to know that it is, watch this, the hard fact. Yes, it happened in the East, but now it is in the West. It's imperative, it's important, my brothers and sisters, that you stay home and stay safe. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that you ought to wear your mask. You ought to wash your hands. You ought to wipe down surfaces because, brothers and sisters, the coronavirus that appeared in our country, in the United States, in our city, in our community is not a hope but it is the hard facts. And brothers and my sisters, let me share with you, a hoax is an act intended, listen now, to deceive or trick, either as a practical joke or as a serious fraud. Hard facts suggest or denote information, listen now, that is true and cannot be refuted. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that we live in a day of deception. We live in a day of fraud. We live in a day of falsehood and lies and imposters. So many things are not what they may appear to be. I'm sure that you will agree with me without reservation or hesitation uh, that products are not uh, what they may, watch this, be advertised to be. Investments are not what they may seem to be. So-called opportunities are not what they may look to be. And I'm sure, brothers and sisters, you come in contact, watch this, with people who are not what they may claim to be. Talk to me somebody. This has in turn created for us a world, a society, an environment of make-believe where many accept the false 
for the true, the imitation for the genuine, the replica for the original, the artificial for the authentic. All too often, my brothers and sisters, many things that may appear to be good are in reality bad. They may appear to be right, but in reality they are wrong. They may appear to be a blessing, but in reality they are a curse. They may appear to be honest, but in reality on this Easter Sunday morning, they are crooked. They may appear to be pure, but I come to tell you, be careful, be cautious, because in reality they are corrupt. They may appear to be saved, but in reality they are very dangerous. The philosophy of this world is a hoax, yet many listen to it and even heed to its advice. This satanic system that we exist in will offer you happiness, but it will it will offer you happiness, but I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, it will only give you sorrow. Yeah, it'll say, come on, have fun. But let me tell you, it would only uh, give you frustration, comfort, but it will only give you misery. Oh, this satanic system, this world, this society will tell you, come on, it's full of love, but you'll come to find out that it will only give you loneliness. However, there is one thing in this world that I have experienced, that I have discovered, that I have come in contact with, and that is, watch this, Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He rose from the dead. And I come to tell you that Jesus is alive. I want you to know that it is not a hoax, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's not a trick. He's not an imposter. He's not a fraud. He's not a liar. I come to tell you this is the hard facts and his claims are true. Brothers and sisters, denying the reality, listen now, of the resurrection remains a central problem in our contemporary society. Historians usually recognize the absurdity, listen now, of most of the proposed alternatives to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Some say that it was the swoon theory. In other words, the swoon theory suggests that Jesus on the cross, uh, watch this now, he became unconscious uh, and they put him in a grave and a wind blew, listen now, and revived him. The swoon theory, watch this. Or some uh, of the school of thought saying that the disciples, brothers and sisters, stole the body of Jesus. But to, let me tell you, I have problems with that because when they covered the tomb, it was a stone that blocked it. And how can the disciples watch this move or one by himself move the stone when they were in hiding? Some brothers and sisters have suggested that the disciples were, watch this, operating in mass hallucination. And they go on with these false theories. But I come to tell you on this Easter Sunday morning that it's just nonsense. Listen, he appeared that catalog in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul tried to convince those, watch this, who contradicted and doubted the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen, let your fingers do the walking and let God do the talking. Listen to Paul in the 12th verse. He says, now in Christ, be preached that he rose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? That's not a comma. That's not a period. That is a question during that particular time. The Greeks, brothers and sisters, believed, watch this, in a soul resurrection, but they did not believe in a bodily resurrection. They looked 
looked upon the physical anatomy, the body as weakness or sin. They looked at the body as a dead thing and the soul was pulling it. But I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that there is a bodily resurrection. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, listen now, that your body, watch this, and your soul will come together. And we all will stand before the judgment seat to give an account of the things that we have done in our body, whether good or bad. I want you to understand that this body that we are in will go back to the dirt from which it came and I'll stand at the, a grave site, a cemetery and say earth to earth and ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But I come to tell you my brothers and sisters don't be alarmed, don't get upset because one day you're going to have a glorified body. Listen my brothers and sisters I want you to know that it's not a hoax but it is the hard fact Paul gives some historical evidence uh, to Jesus. Watch this uh, resurrection. Let your fingers do the walking and look right in the third verse. Brothers and sisters, I'm not making this up, you know. Listen to what Paul said. He says, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Listen now, according to the scriptures, uh, according to the Old Testament prophecies, uh, listen brothers and sisters, it was prophesied that Jesus would die. Then listen to what Paul said in verse 4, and that he was buried, watch this, and that he rose again the third day, here it is, according to to the scriptures. I want you to understand uh, that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God uh, and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof and instruction in righteousness. All oh, my brothers and sisters, here Paul gives some historical evidence. Listen to what Paul said. Uh, he said, brothers and sisters, and that he was seen, I'm not making this up, you know, in verse 5, he was seen of Cephas. In other words, he was seen by Peter. You do know Peter, don't you? Impetuous Peter. You do know Peter, outspoken Peter. You know Peter who said, if all these would deny you, I would deny you. And you know what happened to Peter when he got to and sat down in the midst of a fire. A man said, you sound like one of them. And he got so mad, he cursed. But I don't want you to throw in the towel on Peter. Because after Peter, brothers and sisters, was anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost, he preached and 3,000 souls were added to the church. Wait a minute. If this is a hoax, if this is a farce, if this is fake, Peter would have never been crucified upside down. Somebody got to talk to me. Then he said, watch this. He appeared to the 12. 12 saw him. Don't you know? That's God's number of completion. That's God's number of perfection. Listen, my brothers and sisters, something is wrong with you. If you do not believe, watch this, 12 witnesses of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. He said after that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once. And Paul wanted them to know that still some of them were living. And so my brothers and sisters, Paul, he gives historical evidence of Jesus' resurrection. Don't you miss this? I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that historical evidence is good. But then here Paul gives, watch this, a personal testimony. But prior to the personal testimony, 
Paul said he was seen, watch this, of James. Oh, look, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that it was James, watch this, who was stabbed, who was killed with a sword. If it is a hoax, nobody wants to be killed by a sword. Oh, my brothers and sisters, listen, Paul gives a personal testimony in verse 8. He says, and last of all, he was seen of me also. As, watch this, one born out of due time. It seemed like one. I saw him. It looked like a, a child that was prematurely born. Paul, brothers and sisters, went around persecuting the church, putting contracts out on Christian's head. But one day on his way, the Lord met him on the Damascus road and Paul brothers and sisters fell down and Jesus said don't you know it's hard to kick against the prick Paul said Lord what would thou have me to do in the ninth chapter of Acts that was the day that Paul was converted I want you to know my brothers and sisters it's alright to hear from Peter it's alright to hear from James it's alright to hear from the other witnesses but I come to tell you on this Easter Sunday morning you need to have your own personal testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, right where you're at in your bedroom you may be in your living room you may be in your car you may be in your dorm you need to stand up and say okay, you can't tell it let me tell it what the resurrected Christ did for me he opened doors for me. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. He been a bridge over troubled waters. He put food on my table. He put a roof over my head. He put a little money in my pocket. Somebody ought to stand up and testify and say, I know him personally. Listen, my brothers and sisters, he said here in verse 12 and 13, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead. In other words, if you believe what we preach, that Christ rose from the dead, he wants them to understand we can't teaching, we can't preaching Christ that he is alive. And now, how can some of you say that there is? No resurrection, Paul was simply saying. If there's no resurrection, then I want you to understand that Jesus is still in the grave. If there's no resurrection. But my brothers and sisters, Paul here says uh, that Jesus was raised from the dead. Uh, if he is still in the grave, uh, Paul said, watch this now. Our preaching the gospel is useless. In other words, our preaching of the gospel is vain. The preaching of the gospel is empty. There's no use of me standing up here on Easter Sunday morning to tell you about the good news of Jesus Christ. If he is still in the grave, if it is a hoax, I come to tell you, our brothers and sisters, the gospel is the garupma. It is the birth, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. The gospel, brothers and sisters, is, watch this now, don't you miss this, it lets us know that salvation has been completed. Good God Almighty, it lets us know, watch this, that the price of redemption has been paid. It, it lets us know that the way of heaven is open to whosoever will. It lets us know, brothers and sisters, that the power of Satan has been defeated. And so we need to understand that if it is a hoax, there's no use of me preaching on Sunday morning. There's no, no use of me, brothers and sisters, sharing my testimony and witnessing to others. But I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I know it's not a hoax because when I preach, I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that it's not flesh, it's the spirit. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that it's not, watch 
this, don't you miss this, just some training in a seminary. You got to understand, I can't preach without the anointing upon me. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, that is not mechanics, but you got to understand it's the dynamics. It's, it's not the letter, it's the spirit. That's why I preach, because he is alive. Not only did he say, brothers and sisters, if Jesus is still dead, preaching the gospel is useless, but also he want us to understand, watch this, practicing our faith is unnecessary. You need to understand, my brothers and sisters, listen now, the Christian faith, the Christian faith is a noun, but it can be used as a verb because we walk by faith. But we got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we are, some of us, is of the Christian faith. Don't miss this. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm jubilant. I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, to be a Christian. Why, Pastor Jay, you happy and jubilant to be a Christian is because, watch this, Mormonism have Joseph Smith. Don't miss this. Uh, Islam have Muhammad. Don't miss this. Uh, Confucius have Confucius. Don't miss this. Uh, Buddhism uh, have Buddha the pot belly one. But I want you to understand that Joseph Smith died and was buried, but he didn't get up. Muhammad died, but he didn't get up. Confucius died, but he didn't get up. Pot belly Buddha did not get up. But I come to tell you on this Easter Sunday morning, I know somebody by the name of Jesus Christ who went down in the grave and he got up early Sunday morning. I want you to understand my brothers and sisters when you think about the Christian faith the Bible is our standard. Love is our distinctive and Jesus is our foundation. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, when I think about the Christian faith, I'm standing on a solid foundation. I want you to understand that my hero is alive and well. Not only do I see that if Jesus is dead and if it is a hoax, the preaching of the gospel is useless and practicing our faith is unnecessary. What I want you to know he says we are still under the penalty of sin or in other words we are still under the condemnation of sin but I come to tell you my brothers and sisters I thank God that Jesus got up it's not a hoax it's the hard facts and I want you to know my brothers and sisters that you can watch this be delivered from your bad behavior you, you, you can be rescued from your corrupt conduct. I come to tell you that you don't have to be a slave to sin. I come to tell you that you don't have to be fettered by your flesh. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I thank God that he has forgiven you. You ought to clap your hands right where you're at. You ought to thank God that he shared, watch this, his grace for your guilt, his mercy for your misery. His forgiveness, brothers and sisters, even though you were the future, you ought to clap your hands. Somebody listening to me right now on Facebook, somebody listening to me on Easter Sunday morning and say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not only brothers and sisters do I see that if Christ did not get up or if it is a hoax, the preaching of the gospel is useless. Uh, practicing our faith is unnecessary. We are still under, watch this, the penalty of sin, condemnation of sin. But I have to help somebody out. Let me, boom, drop it like a hop to let you know. You can let your fingers do the walk and let God do the talking. And you can go to the eighth chapter of Romans, first verse, and say, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Then, brothers and sisters, he said, if Christ, watch this, is still in the grave, if Christ was not raised from the dead, if it is a hoax, 
He's telling us then those that died, watch this, have utterly perished. In other words, those who, who died in Christ are eternally ruined. They are still in the grave. Come on, listen, brothers and sisters, to what Paul says. Let your fingers do the walking and let God do the talking. Listen to what he says in verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Yet, uh, watch this, ye are yet in your sins. Then, watch this, they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Don't you miss this, my brothers and sisters? You need to understand that if Christ is still in the grave, if this is a hoax, uh, will I come to tell you your mother, your father, they died in vain. I want you to know that uncle and auntie, watch this, grandmother and grandfather, they are still in the grave if it is a hoax. They just have become fertilizer for the vegetation and the green landscape. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if this is a hoax, you went to a funeral in vain. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that though I love ones, our friends and our family members are dead and gone. It's not a hoax because to be absent, help me Jesus, from the body is to be present with the Lord. And one day the archangel is coming and all the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Paul telling us brothers and sisters if in this life Jesus is our only hope here and that we have no hope beyond. Paul I'm just about to close now said that we are miserable we need to understand brothers and sisters that there is life beyond the grave. You need to fist bump, don't, 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 don't hit any hand. fist bump uh, and tell somebody, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, uh, but I come to understand uh, that there is uh, a, a world beyond this world. John said, uh, I've seen a new heaven uh, and I've seen uh, a new earth. Uh, hope that you can see is not hope. Uh, hope, brothers and sisters, is unseen. That means you got to have the confident expectation. Jesus said that if I go away, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I get that place prepared, I'm coming back to receive you unto myself. And you ain't got to hate on nobody because he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. You ought to pause and fist bump and say, I ain't hating on you because you got a mansion and I got a mansion and grandmother said I'm, I'm, I'm sending up my temper because she's trying to build a mansion in the sky. You need to understand my brothers and sisters that some folk think that this world is all it is. Think this is our only existence. Think that this is our only reality. But I come to tell you my brothers and sisters just as sure as you're born you're going to die. We need to understand my brothers and sisters that it is important for us to know that there is life beyond this grave. The Epicureans thought that this life was the only place to be. They said eat, drink and be merry because tomorrow we die. That's all they were concerned about was music and theater. They didn't have any prep make any preparations for the life that's beyond this place. And I come to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that there are too many people who are so earthly minded that they are no heavenly good. And I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, all 
this Easter Sunday morning. Jesus said in the 20th verse, but now Christ is risen from the dead and have become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And I want you to know that when a Christian dies, they are only sleeping because when the Lord comes back, he's going to call all the dead in him back to life again. Yes, I want you to understand that the first fruits mean the guarantee, the seal, the assurance of our resurrection, the dedication, listen, of the first fruit guaranteed and assured the blessing of God upon all the other fruit. Yeah, the first fruit is the harvest of a farmer's first crop. And I want you to know this morning, my brothers and my sisters, yeah, that since Christ got up, we too are going to be raised from the dead. And I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, yes, we died in Christ. And since we died in Christ, we're going to be resurrected in Christ because of the death of Christ and then going in the grave oh one day he's going to lift us up as by one man Adam death came into this world but I thank God for the last Adam that one day he's going to resurrect our soul and I want you to know I, I Oh, I want you to understand that it's not a hoax, it is the hard facts. And one day he rose in my soul. He rose in my soul. He rose in my soul. And I come to tell you, Jesus will rise in your soul. I come to tell you, yes, my brothers and my sisters, I, I want you to know that Jesus said, no man take my life, but I lay it down and I have the power to lift it up. Do you remember Jack in the box, Jack in the box, on the side of Jack in the box, they had a handle and when they turn it, Jack would pop up out of the box. But they had to push Jack up back down in the box up and then turn, turn the handle on the side. Jack would pop up again. But I come to tell you as I get ready to close up that Jesus, you can't keep him in the box. Jesus, he got up with all power in his hands. He said, Go ahead, say it isn't me, but he told them that I, I, oh, I'll rise again. Let me close by telling you, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, oh, I, oh. Be yours. I 
I come to let you know, my brothers and sisters, that this is not a hoax. This is not a joke. This is not a fraud. Jesus did get up. There is no if that he got up, but it is the truth. It's the hard reality that cannot be denied, cannot be refuted. Whether people don't want to accept it or believe it or not, it's still genuine and it's still true that Jesus is alive and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And let me say to you, my brother or my sister, man or woman, boy or girl, that this Easter Sunday morning is a good opportunity for you to give your life to the risen Christ. He came, brothers and sisters, and he said, all that call upon me or call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to understand, listen now, you got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that when you get in your car, you need to have a destination. You don't just need to be riding everywhere. You need to have a destination and knowing where you're going. And I come to tell you that when you die, you need to know where you're going to go. You either go into heaven or you go into hell. There is no neutrality. There is no middle ground. Well, you know, one day my wife and I was going to stay in a hotel. But what my wife did, she called to see that they had the confirmation number that they gave her. They gave her the confirmation number. And you know the confirmation number is important because when we get there, the confirmation number let us know that that room is ours. And let me ask you, have you made reservations for heaven? <laughs> Don't you know that you can have the confirmation number? Christ is that confirmation number that you can have to get into the kingdom. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except by me. So know that on this Easter Sunday morning, that is not a hoax, that is not a joke, that is not a fraud that he got up. The hard facts, it's evident, it's true because of historical evidence and the personal testimonies that others share of the risen Christ. God bless you and I love you. Bow your heads, close your eyes, open your heart. Dear God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus, asking that you would touch those who are listening. Lead them to godly repentance, oh God. Save them, because you are our savior. You are our rescuer, you are our deliverer. Deliver them from the power and control of sin. Break every stronghold. Destroy every yoke in the name of Jesus. Fill them with the precious Holy Ghost. Transform them. Convert them in Jesus' name. And oh God, I pray for those who are sick and afflicted. I pray for the bereaved and grieving. Touch them, Lord, because you are alive. You were dead, but now you are alive. We have the keys of death and hell in your hands. Speak peace and consolation in the midst of their sorrow and their pandemonium. In Jesus' name, amen. We appreciate your sacrificial gifts. I know you have to pay your bills. I know you have your own responsibilities and your obligations. I thank you so much. Many of our members and friends who have given uh, to this ministry, we hope that this ministry uh, would be a blessing to you in your Christian walk. Uh, there are three methods of giving. You can give through Givelify. You can give through Cash App. Or you can bring it to the church and drop it in the mailbox. The address is 17133 John R. 
and it's on the screen where you can see all three methods of how you can give. Thank you so much. God bless you.